Hey there. This video is gonna be all about the XLR top handle that you can get on the Sony FX30 or the Sony FX3. In my opinion, it's one of the most underrated accessories for these cameras, and I wanna dive into it in this video. First of all, audio is super important, and you've probably heard this a lot. I talk a lot about video quality on this channel, but I do take my audio very seriously. And what you need to remember is that when you're creating content, even if the video is not perfect, if the audio sounds good, people will be more forgiving with the video. So keep that in mind. Now this top handle is awesome for a lot of reasons, which I'll get into in this video. And it's one of the reasons why I gravitate towards cameras like the FX3 and the FX30 or cameras like the C70 that have built-in XLR inputs. And now we have more options with things like the XLR K3M and you know the Tascam unit for the Canon cameras to get XLR inputs directly into the camera. So first of all, you might be thinking, why do I need XLR? Well, Nowadays, it's probably a little bit less important because there's a lot of other microphones out there that have different kinds of connections. So there's some microphones that are 3.5 millimeter and um, USB or and XLR, and so they have different options. But when you have XLR inputs, it opens up the possibilities to a lot more microphones like the SM7B, which a lot of people like to use. Also, it's a more professional standard. The connections are more solid and you can have longer runs for the cables. And generally, most of the professional microphones that you'd be coming across are going to be XLR. Now, it doesn't mean you can't get great results with 3.5 millimeter microphones, but a lot of the times when you get nerdy about this stuff, you wanna have XLR inputs. Now, it's very similar to the XLR K3M, which goes on to most Sony cameras, and we will talk about the differences between these two later, but I wanna dive in specifically with the top handle for the FX cameras. So I got the XLR top handle mounted on the FX30 here, and I think that's one of the best things about this accessory is that it just bolts directly into the quarter 20s on the camera. It's very secure and very solid. I really like that. I don't feel like I'm gonna break it or it's gonna fall off or you know it's gonna be unreliable because it bolts on. It also provides an actual handle, which is really nice for carrying the camera around or getting low shots and things like that. On the top here, we have a mic holder, which you can put a microphone in, and I will talk about this a little bit later because of the spacing and stuff like that. And it, this handle also has quarter 20 mounting spots, so you have two on the top of the handle and one on the back of the handle for mounting other accessories, cold shoes, stuff like that. I personally don't like to put a lot of weight on the handle, but you can mount a couple lightweight things and I don't think that's really a problem. Over on this side, we have an on off switch, which is really handy because if you have this mounted and you don't wanna use the audio, you, you can't remove it, unfortunately, this the audio device, but you can just turn it off and then use you know the 3.5 that's inside the camera. In terms of ports, we have three audio inputs. We have two XLRs and a 3.5 jack. And these XLR inputs are cool because you can use an XLR, but you can also use a quarter inch plug here too. So if you're hooking up other things, you can put that in there so they are combo jacks. There's also an input selection on the back of this camera, uh, sorry, on the back of the top handle. And so we will talk about this a little bit more later when we get into how this functions. And then on this side is really where all the business is. You have all the main controls here and it's very, very customizable. So we will get into the details on how this works and how you can set this up. Now let's go over the settings and controls on the XLR handle because there's a lot going on here. It's very customizable, but it's also very confusing. So one of the first things I wanna mention is the input control that's on the back of the unit. And so basically this controls what goes to channel one and channel two. Now you can set this up for either two channel or four channel audio, and we'll talk about both. But this on the back here will select what goes to channel one and channel two. So the, what it's set at now, the bottom switch is input one will go to both channel one and channel two. The middle one is input one will go to channel one, input two will go to channel two. And then the top one is uh, input three will go to channel one and channel two. And input three is the 3.5 millimeter jack. And that's a stereo jack. So there are two signals that you can get in there. Now let's dive into the main control area here. And I wanna talk through this so you understand how this works. Now it's broken up into three sections, input one, input two, input three, and some other uh, functions on here. For most things, you're gonna be using input one, but I will talk about a lot of different kinds of um, ways to set this up and use this. So for each one, you have control. So we have an attenuation, which will make broad strokes or changes to the actual amplification. We have a selection here between line, mic, and mic plus 48 volts, which is phantom power. For most microphones you'll be using, you're probably gonna want phantom power unless your microphone is powered. But one of the benefits of using something like this and XLR microphones is that you can use the camera to power the microphone. So generally this is gonna be on 48 volts. But if you are bringing a line input in, you do have that ability to make that change here. Now over here is the auto manual selection for the gain. This is the gain control here. 
And I generally use use the manual here because I like to control it myself. I know some people do use auto and trust it, but I, I just always use manual. You have the same controls here for input two, but the difference here is that now you can link this to channel one, which if you only have one input and you want that input on both left and right, which is most of the time, then you can link these. And I will talk about that. Over here for uh, channel three, we have the same thing, auto manual and the gain control. And then over here, you actually have a low cut or a high pass filter. So if you wanna take out some low frequencies, you can do that here with either 100 or 300 Hertz. So that's the breakdown here. And as I said before, you have this switch here to turn the audio on and off from the handle. So I wanna attach this and show you what happens in the camera when you hook this up and we'll talk through some different situations and how to set them up. So when you pop this on the camera, uh, you will see that the 48 kilohertz, 16-bit, two-channel audio comes on to the camera screen. Again, if I take it off, it goes away. So this is identifying that that's going on in the camera. Now, if you dive into the menu here and you go to the, the camera and the audio settings, you go down to the NI Shoe Audio Select, and you can choose three different options. You have 16-bit uh, two-channel, 24-bit two-channel, and 24-bit four-channel. So we will talk about four-channel on it, but for right now, let's talk about two-channel. And I highly recommend that you use 24-bit because it's gonna sound better than 16-bit. So we're gonna select that and back out of here. So let's hook up a microphone and show you how we're gonna do this. So first uh, scenario here is using one microphone and you want it to come out on both the left and the right channels. If you're just recording talking head like I'm doing right now, which is how I would set this up, or if you're doing live streaming or anything like that where you're just using one microphone. So we have one microphone here, let's put it into channel one. Okay, so we're gonna be t this microphone here. And what we have, as I said on the back, we're gonna make sure that we have that selection set up to channel one, going to channel one and channel two. And over here on the settings menu, or <laughs> settings side here, we wanna make sure we set this up properly. So again, I have it set up to phantom power and I have it on manual, so I'm gonna control the gain right here. And then over here, we are gonna switch this channel two to linked. And so what that does, it's gonna link channel one and channel two together so that when I make adjustments with channel one, you should see the level changing on the um, on both left and right or channel one and channel two. Now, what's really cool about this is, you know, if, as I said, if you're doing talking head or live streaming, this one control will just, it'll work like one microphone on both channels. But the nice thing here is if you unlink them, then you can set the levels differently. So let's say you want to have channel one to be your sort of normal level, and then channel two you can set a little bit lower as what's called a safety track. So as I'm talking here, you can see that channel one is gonna be louder than channel two. So if I got really excited or there was a loud noise or something like that, and channel one clipped, channel two will be totally intact. So that's a really cool feature. But for most situations, uh, if I'm just in you know recording Talking Head or something like that, I'll just link these together and have one control. Now you have to be careful if you don't have them linked and let's say you're doing a live stream, then you may only have audio on one channel or it might be much louder on one channel than the other. Of course, if you're bringing it to your computer, you can then you know make one channel go to both those sorts of things. All right, now let's hook up a second microphone and this will be the Shure SM7B here. And this is a very common microphone that you see for podcasting and voiceovers. You've probably seen it in a lot of YouTube videos. One thing I wanna note, if you do wanna use this microphone in particular, that you need a cloud lifter or something in between the microphone and the XLR unit because it doesn't. Have, this doesn't have enough gain, but most people know that about that microphone. It's a dynamic microphone, very quiet. Anyways, I don't need to talk too much about that. All right, so let, let me talk about the settings here to get two channels going. So what we got here in the input selection on the back, make sure we switch to the middle setting because that'll be channel one going to channel one, channel two going to channel two. And then over here on the main settings, Couple things to point out here. We wanna make sure that the second channel is on manual, not linked, because then it will have the same volume control as channel one. So you wanna have independent control. So now when you change channel two's audio, it will control it separately than channels one, channel one, which is what you want when you have two different microphones. So you know you have the ability to adjust each of these independently. Now let's talk about the third input on this device, which is a 3.5 millimeter jack. I think one of the most common things to plug in here is probably gonna be a wireless lab system. This is the original wireless go, which is only has one transmitter. But the fact that this is a stereo input and you have something like the wireless go 2 or the DJI mic or several other two channel wireless lab systems, 
you're getting two inputs or two labs or two transmitters and it will put one on the left channel, one on the right channel. And so what that allows you to do is get four channels of audio going on here. So if you have something plugged in here and you're still in two channel audio mode, which is what we're still in right now, and you have this selection on the top set to channel three here, then it will put that to channel one and channel two and then you can control the volume here. Although what I'd probably do is if you're just gonna be using 3.5 millimeter audio, I'd probably disable the handle and plug it directly into the camera. Now keep in mind that you can't control the left and the right separately. You can control just the total with either the control on the unit or in the camera. So if there's a difference in inputs between the left and the right channel on you know your two lav setups, then you have to do that control in the actual wireless system separately. So you only have one control for both channels three and channel four. Now let's talk about four channel audio. <laughs> and this is where it gets really fun. It can also get a little overwhelming when you're trying to manage all this at once, but having physical controls on the actual XLR unit is really handy. I find that to be just a huge benefit than having to dive into the menu somewhere and make controls digitally in the menu system. Anyways, so we have to set this up. It's pretty easy. If you go back to the menu where we were before and we select uh, the audio uh, settings here, and we just change it from two, uh, two channel to four channel. That's gonna allow us to have four channel audio. And now you can see on the screen that you have four channels of audio being recorded on the top left. And you can see all the levels uh, independently which is super, super handy. So this is an incredibly powerful tool. And as I said, right now I'm only using just this one lav that goes into channels three and four, but this could be a two channel audio device giving you four total in this camera setup. So that was a rundown on how to set up and use the device. I also wanna talk for a moment about different use cases and common scenarios that you might find yourself in using this XLR top handle. First of which, as I was talking before, uh, is the one mic input like I'm doing right now for recording Talking Head or live streaming. As I said, it's great. Whenever you can feed audio directly into the camera, you don't get any audio syncing issues because the audio and the video get, both get fed to your computer at the same time, so you don't have any issues with that. Also, if you have a studio where you're doing talking head and streaming, you don't have to change anything. You just record or stream, same setup. I absolutely love that. Having two XLRs is great for maybe a two person podcast, or maybe you have an interview and you have two microphones set up and you can just, you know, adjust the volume for both of those and get it really dialed in. If you add microphones into the third channel, so you get up to four microphone inputs now, you have just so many possibilities. So what I have in front of me here is sort of my favorite little run and gun documentary setup. So I wanna talk you through this. And so what I have first in channel one is gonna be a nice XLR shotgun microphone. This is the Rode NTG5, and I will leave links down below for all the gear that I talk about in here. I love this for picking up um, ambient sounds, backup audio, those sorts of things. In channel two, what I like to use is the Sennheiser AVX wireless lav setup. I made a review about this. This is my favorite lav setup. It's super professional. It is. It never lets me down. It's great. Also, it's it has an XLR plug on it, so it goes directly into the XLR unit, and then you can control the audio with a dial, which I, I just love when you're doing everything by yourself, you can actually touch a physical dial. I love that. So this is an awesome little setup here, and then if I wanted to plug in uh, a, like a lav or something like that here, sometimes I'll mic myself or mic someone else, you have that option to plug it in the, the third channel. The other things, and this kind of leads me into talking about accessories for, for the XLR unit, is this XLR extension, uh, top handle that's made by small rig. And as I said before, I don't like to put a lot of weight on this handle because, you know, I don't want to put a lot of stress on the mount here, but once you get a microphone on here, once you get a lav uh, plugged in here, you know, this is one more thing. This is kind of where I like to max, that's where I kind of max it out. But I do really like this for a few reasons. One of which it gives a little bit more rigidity to it, but also the original, just the handle on its own is a little short. So putting this on here really makes it more balanced and the grip, that's on the bottom of this, really just hold your fingers really well. And uh, I absolutely love this. And on the back, you have also a, um, a cold shoe that you can slap a wireless lav pack or something like that into. So this is my compact uh, little setup for uh, run and gun work. If I put a 24 to 70 on it, then I'm pretty much good to go and I can pretty much take care of anything. Um, uh, usually this would be on the FX3 with the 24 to 70, but you could also use like a 16 to 35 or something like that. So another thing I wanna mention here, which is uh, this short cable. A lot of people ask me about this when they see this. Um, I'll put a link down below for this. I like it, it's very tidy and compact and works really well on the right angle. So really think about your cable management. I like to keep things really tidy and small, especially if you're doing run and gun work. But one accessory that I really need to talk about is going to be the microphone holder on the top. And this is a stress point for a lot of people because the size of this is actually 
too big for most microphones. This is set up for the Sony microphones, but not for most microphones that people use. So there's an easy solution. These microphone spaces are very inexpensive. Um, they're under 10 bucks. It's just a couple of rubber pieces that slide over your mic. You drop it in here and then you close it down and it's nice and tight, no flopping around. And it also, um, you know, still get that rubber shock mount that's built into the unit. So I've seen a lot of people using gaff tape or towels or whatever. Uh, these spacers are great. They're inexpensive. Um, and that way you can use it with, with any microphone. Let's talk about the XLR top handle versus the XLR K3M module, which you can buy for Sony Alpha cameras. Very common accessory. One big difference, of course, is the fact that you get an actual top handle. But, you know, in terms of the way these function, the settings, the dials, they work exactly the same. There's one difference, though, besides actually having a top handle, is that on the XLR K3M, you have this switch that goes from analog to digital, which helps out a lot with the older Sony cameras. Make sure that you check to see if your camera is compatible with these. But this one only provides a digital signal, so you can only use this with the newer alpha cameras. Now you can use this XLR top handle on some of the newer alpha cameras. Like I have used this top handle on the a7 IV before, and you might be wondering about the mounting points. And if you're, if you want to make that conversion, small rig does make an adapter plate that they, you can put on their cages that allows this to screw directly in. So if you only have an FX 30 or FX three with the top handle, you can in a pinch use this on a7 IV. And I have used it in a pinch even without that, but it is not super secure. Uh, one thing I do like about the handle, as I said before, it is very secure with these two mounting points, although the XLR K3M does feel very solid. But again, you're, all the stress is just directly on that on that hot shoe there, and there's no actual bolts. So this is a little bit more, uh, you know, you have to be a little bit more careful with this. The other thing is price. So this right now, uh, you know, we buy the FX30 is an additional $400. This goes for $600, but it also comes with a microphone and the extension unit to, to move this off the, the hot shoe. So you get a few other accessories with this, but uh, I think for most people, if you're gonna be using an FX30, I probably recommend the top handle, but either one will work. I just wanted to make this video because this is such a cool accessory and I don't think it gets a lot of love. And if you're on the fence about picking one of these up, I would say pick it up because you can use it in a lot of different situations. Also, a lot of the times when cameras get released, they're out of stock. And so one way you can often get them when they're out of stock is buying them with either the kit lens or in this case, the top handle. So you might have better luck ordering it with the top handle. Anyways, hope you found this helpful. If you did, please consider hitting subscribe down below. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.